Hi everyone, uh, this week I'm coming to you with a quick grammar snapshot for chapter 4. There are a few different things we'll cover here in this video, beginning with por and para, um, continuing on with the subjunctive with noun clauses, and finally ending up with commands. This is sort of a uh, more difficult chapter in terms of grammar. All the others have been pretty simple and things that you should know. These are getting to be a little bit more complex, so we'll spend some time on these. As we begin with por en para, it's hard to know which specific form to use at any given time, so I've created a few little things here to help you, and we're going to go through each one individually with some examples. Uh, the first use of para, and you can see I've color coordinated these as well, para will be in red and por will be in blue, or navy I should say. Um, so as we begin here, para usually is used to refer to time limits and deadlines. We also usually translate para in these cases as for or by. So for example, necesito el pasaporte para esta tarde. I need the passport for this afternoon. I gotta have it by this afternoon. Pienso estar en Bristol para las tres de la tarde. I plan to be in Bristol by three o'clock in the afternoon. So usually time limits and deadlines, para, para, okay? Some other uses of para typically relate to recipients, destinations, or places. So for example, mañana salimos para la playa. Tomorrow we're leaving for the beach. The beach is our destination in this case. Or um, a very famous use of para here, es para ti, it's for you, uh, you're the recipient of that, es para mi abuela, es para mi, es para ti, es para mi hermano, all right, um, the recipient in that case. You also use para when referring to the purpose of an action or an object, now for me that just sounds like grammar gobbledygook, right, so I've created a few little other things that will help you, usually para is translated as in order to along with an infinitive, so Vamos a Colombia para conocer el país. We're going there in order to get to know the country. Para conocer. You can see it's used with an infinitive, conocer in this case, and translated as in order to. Okay, another very common use of para is translated as for blanking, for taking, for writing, for eating. So la cámara es para sacar fotos. It's for taking pictures. La pizza es Para comer. Pizza is for eating, so on and so forth. It's for ing, along with the jar in there. Okay? We also use para when referring to work objectives. So, Antonio estudia para piloto. He's studying in order to be a pilot. That's, that's his goal. Yo estudié para maestro, so on and so forth. Oh, and para is very commonly used with opinions. Para mí, siempre es divertido viajar. Para ti, para él, para ella, usually translated in these cases as for me or more so in my opinion. Para mí. Okay? So again, those uses of para. Time limits, specific deadlines, recipients, destinations, uh, for ing, a work objective, or when expressing opinions. You typically use para. All other uses typically use por, uh, for example, with a duration of time, oftentimes translated as during or for, we use por. For example, vamos al aeropuerto por la tarde. We're going to go to the airport during the afternoon. Pienso estudiar en España por un semestre. I'm planning on studying in Spain for a semester. Okay, that's a duration of time, translated as during or for, por. Uh, por is also very commonly used with motion, and in this context, it receives a translation of through, around, by, or along. So, pasé por el control de seguridad. I passed through the security checkpoint. Hay muchas maletas por el reclamo de equipaje. Uh, there's a lot of luggage, a lot of suitcases around the baggage claim area. And voy por el parque. I'm going through the park. Notice how in that last sentence, voy por el parque. Notice if I changed it to para, how the significance of the, the, the meaning of the sentence would completely change. Voy por el parque. I'm going through the park. Voy para el parque. I'm on my way to the park. The park's my destination, right? So uh, it, as you get more advanced with your Spanish, it can completely change the meaning, right? 
We also use por when referring to goals of actions or objects. So, vamos por usted a las dos. We're coming for you at two o'clock. Uh, we'll be by for you, you might say. Vamos por usted. Or, los estudiantes fueron por el equipaje. The students went for their luggage. That was their objective. They were going to get that. That was the goal of their action or their object. We use por oftentimes when referring also to the translation of in exchange for or because of, on behalf of. Some examples here. Tuve que cancelar el vuelo por una emergencia. I had to cancel the flight because of an emergency, due to an emergency, we might say. Pagué 250 dólares por el boleto. I paid $250 in exchange for the ticket. And finally, lo hiciste por mí. Did you do it for me? Did you do it on my behalf? So again, por in these contexts can be translated as because of, in exchange for, or on behalf of. Okay, commonly used with por. Um, a couple of final reasons. We have por with the means by which something must be accomplished. I like to translate these as via. So for example, ¿Recibiste los pasajes por correo electrónico? Did you receive the tickets via email? Hicimos las reservaciones por internet. We made the reservations via internet, by internet, on the internet, por internet. Okay, so a lot of times the means by which something can be accomplished, um, translated as by or via in this case. Those, uh, those situations also warrant the use of por. And finally, there are just some idiomatic expressions that naturally use por in speech. There's some of these with para as well, but definitely more commonly so with por. So um, some examples. Por cierto, indeed, or por aquí, around here. Por Dios, for heaven's sake. Por eso, that's why. Por ejemplo, for example. Por favor, we all know that one, please. Um, or por fin, finally. So lots of examples here. Uh, those are in your text. You can study those. So I just want to give you an, an opportunity to practice a few of these. There's a little... Um, little reading here. We're just going to do the part about Carmen for the sake of time, okay? But I want you to uh, go ahead and pause our audio and give this section here about Carmen a try. Okay, now that you've had a second to try these, we see Carmen says, Buenos, buenas tardes. Soy Carmen Dominguez y trabajo blank el periódico digital El Universal. So, good afternoon. My name is Carmen Dominguez and I work for the digital newspaper called El Universal. So I work for the newspaper. Uh, in this case, that is my objective, my work objective. So I would say trabajo por el periódico. I work on behalf of the newspaper, you might also say. Um, she says that estoy aquí blank aprender más sobre la carrera de este importante artista. So I'm here in order to learn more about the career of this important artist, because I'm saying in order to, you should translate this as para. So number one, por, number two, para. Okay, here's another example for you. Uh, number one, anoche estudié en la biblioteca blank tres horas. I'm saying that last night I studied in the library blank three hours. So what do you think it's gonna be? Por o para? Hopefully you're saying por, because in this case, uh, it's a duration of time. I studied in the library for three hours. It should be por. Number two. Estuve en Caracas blank un mes y me divertí mucho. Estuve en Caracas blank un mes y me divertí mucho. What do you think? Por or para? Well, un mes, a month, is a specific period of time. So in this case, this would be a duration, and therefore I should use por. Estuve en Caracas por un mes, for a month. And last one. Fui al mercado, al aire libre, blank, disfrutar el día. So I went to the open-air market, blank, to enjoy the day. Again, this would be a common use of para. Um, you could translate this as for blanking. So I went to the market... Um, for enjoying the day, or I would use it as in order to. So I went to the market in order to enjoy the day. Either way, para is your answer. Okay, so that's a quick little grammar snapshot of por and para. 
Next, we're going to move on to the subjunctive. Uh, I included a little funny meme for you here. Brace yourselves, the subjunctive is coming. Um, the subjunctive is something that I feel like if you're a native speaker of Spanish, you never really learn how to do. You just sort of like hear it and you know that it's right. Um, and if you're a student of Spanish and you learn the subjunctive, probably in your Spanish 3 class, um, maybe you're still a little hesitant about it. The subjunctive is something that's kind of hard for a lot of people. So I just like to really spend a lot of time on this and make sure that students really understand it because it is something that you do use in the real life, uh, not in the real life, in real life, sorry. Um, so I like to start just by telling students that the subjunctive is not a tense, right? Everybody says, oh, the indicative, the preterite, the imperfect. You learn about all these tenses, right? The subjunctive is actually a mood, not a tense. And um, you've been learning about the indicative mood. And within that indicative mood, there are various tenses, the present, preterite, and imperfect, as we said. Um, we use the indicative when we're expressing things that are certain, uh, factual statements, things that are real and definite. However, with the subjunctive, we are expressing more hypothetical or subjective actions. These are things for which there's usually some uncertainty or some doubt present. Okay, so um, now I want to start by saying that people oftentimes misuse the subjunctive in English. For example, um, there's a Justin Bieber song you may be familiar with, and it starts out, If I was your boyfriend, I'd never let you go. Um, Justin actually here should be saying if I were your boyfriend because were in this case is um, the subjunctive tense. So if I was your boyfriend, that's the indicative. If I were your boyfriend, that's the subjunctive. So he should be using the subjunctive here because there's a sense of doubt, right? I'm not your boyfriend. If I were your boyfriend, blah, 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 I'd never let you go. Um, and I will not play the YouTube video for you with that song, um, although I do for my in-person classes. Okay, um, so again, the big idea here, a lot of times we don't have control over situations about how people feel or if they're actually going to do what we want. And these are situations where the subjunctive would be required. For example, it's good for you to exercise every day. Well, yes, it is good for you to do that, but are you going to exercise Eh, I don't really know. You might, you might not. I hope that you study tonight. I really do hope that, but are you going to? Maybe, maybe you go to a party. Maybe you study. I don't know. I don't know what you do, right? Um, I doubt they know where I live. They might. I hope they don't, but they might, okay? So in this case, subjunctive as well. There's some doubt. There's some uncertainty. I can't control the outcome of those situations. So um, in these cases, we would use the subjunctive. So um, I always like to teach students a little trick for the subjunctive. There are three things you always need in order for the subjunctive to occur. You need a change of subject, aka you need two subjects, you need a K in the middle, and then you need some kind of verb from the acronym weirdo. And I'm going to show you weirdo in just a second, okay? But in this case, um, you can see I've color coordinated it up here for you. You have an independent clause which is always in the indicative tense. In this case, insisto in, I insist that. You have a K, insisto in K, I insist that. And this is where my subject changes. I insist that you blah, blah, blah. I insist that he blah, blah, blah. I insist that we blah, blah, blah. If I said I insist that I blah, 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 that would not be a subject change. I insist that I blah, blah, blah. If you don't have a subject change, you're gonna continue to use the indicative tense. I insist that I lose weight. I insist that I drink less coffee. Okay, um, there's not a subject change indicative, but in this case, there is a subject change. I insist that you estés en clase a tiempo. I insist that you are in class on time. Okay, again, this is a situation where um, there's some doubt present. I insist that you're in class on time. Well, are you gonna be in class on time? I really hope so, but what if you're not? Okay, insisto en que estés, and not estás, right? So the first part of our sentence before the K is referred to as our independent clause, and it's always in the indicative. Following our K, the second part of the sentence is referred to as our dependent clause, and it is always in the subjunctive, um, assuming that you have the change of subject, the K, and the weirdo expression present. Okay, so... Um, Going back to these sentences I gave you in English, I hope that you study tonight. You can see all these things being broken down. I hope, there's my independent clause, 
that, there's my K in Spanish, ojalá que you study tonight. Well, because I don't know that you're going to study, that's the part that has uncertainty or doubt. So ojalá que estudies esta noche. I doubt that they know where I live. Dudo que, dudo, normal present tense indicative, que, there's my that. I doubt that they know, dudo que sepan donde vivo. Doubt they know where I live. Again, they might, they might not. So the second part of my sentence, the you study, the they know, that dependent clause is going to be in the subjunctive. So one more time in summary, you need three things to be present in order for the subjunctive to be used. What are those three things again? Ah, right. Hopefully you're saying two subjects, a change of subject, a K, and some kind of trigger from weirdo. Okay, so this is just a little acronym that I created for my students to help you remember. Um, so weirdo, the W stands for wishes or wants, the E, emotions, the I, impersonal expressions, the R, requests or recommendations, the D, doubt or denial, and the O, ojalá. We're going to look at examples of each one of these individually, um, but in this case, if you do have two subjects, a K, and a weirdo trigger word, an emotion, doubt, denial, the word ojalá, you're always going to use the subjunctive. Okay, here's an example. Quiero que pase por el control de agricultura. I want that you pass. Oh, there we go. I want first subject indicative. Okay, check. Oh, second subject. I want for you to pass. Not I want to pass, but this lady, the customs officer, is saying I want you to pass through the agricultural control. So, quiero que pase usted. So you see that there. Okay, um, as far as conjugating the subjunctive goes, uh, pretty easy process. Um, you're always going to start by forming the yo, dropping the o, and then switching to the opposite ending. So that means if you're dealing with a verb that is normally an ar verb, it's going to use er ir endings. And if you're dealing with a verb that's normally an er or an ir verb, it's going to use your ar endings. Okay. So, as an example, let's say you have the verb hablar. In the subjunctive, instead of hablo, hablas, habla, you have hablé, hables, hablé. In this case, instead of using your AR endings, we're going back and using the opposite ending. We're using an ER ending, so the ones that are in green here. So that's why you see hablé, hables, hablé, hablemos, hables, hablen. Okay, same thing with comer. Um, so comer was normally an ER verb, so instead of como comes come, you get coma, comas, coma, comamos, comais, and coman. So in that case, ER verbs use the AR endings, which are shown in red here. Now you may be saying, well, Mr. Harrison, that's really stupid. Why do I have to form the O and then drop the O and add all this stuff? Well, you do that because some of these verbs have irregular yo forms. So for example, tener in the yo form, as you know, becomes tengo. So um, when you start adding the opposite ending, an ER verb, instead of adding back an E, you get tenga, tengas, tenga, tengamos, tengais, and tengan. Okay, so that's why it's important to form the yo. There are a whole series of verbs that are irregular in the yo form that I know you've learned about in earlier Spanish classes, but just so you have them on reference here, decir becomes digo, hacer becomes hago, oír becomes oigo, poner, pongo. Salir, salgo. Traer, traigo. Venir, vengo. And ver, veo. So you can see those. And then, of course, how they become irregular in the subjunctive. So take a look at poner, for example, which is an ER verb. Instead of pongue, we get ponga, pongas, ponga, pongamos, pongas, ponga, so on and so forth. Okay? Pretty easy. Um, you may learn have learned in an earlier class about verbs that end in car, gar, and zar. Uh, verbs that end in car. In the preterite form, change to k in the yo form, right? Gar changes to ge, and sar changes to se. The same kind of rule applies here with the subjunctive, except that um, with kata verbs, the c changes to a q u. So sacar, you get sake, sakes, sake, saquemos, sakes, and sake. Notice it does change in all of the forms. The c changes to a q u. So car verbs, just like they change to k. It just becomes case, K, K most case, and can. So if you can remember that car verbs change to K, that should help you. Likewise, gar verbs changing to gay 
the G in God of Herbs becomes GU. So, bagar, bage, but then still, bages, bage, bagemos, bages, and pagen. So, again, the gar verbs, sorry, car verbs change to K, sake, gar verbs change to gay, bage, and zar verbs change to se. So, cruzar, cruce, cruces, cruce, crucemos, cruces, and crucen. You'll notice um, these are always AR verbs, so they are going to use your ER, IR, and things. That's why you have A, ace, A, amos, ace, and N on the ends of all of these. Okay, so one more time. Car verbs change to K, gar verbs change to G, and zar verbs change to SE. So you can see those all the way through. Okay, finally, as we keep going, um, it is important to recall these verbs that have stem changes. Okay, so normally, for example, you look at pensar, which is an AR verb, um, and it has a stem change from E to IE. This is where the subjunctive gets tricky. So if you're dealing with a verb that is an AR or an ER verb that has a stem changer, it's going to follow the same procedure that we saw uh, back in our earlier Spanish classes, where it only stem changes when it's inside the boot, meaning that if a verb stem changes from E to IE, it's going to stem change in all of the forms, the yo, the tu, the el, ella, usted, and the ellos, ellas, ustedes, but it is not going to stem change in the nosotros or the vosotros. Okay, again, this is only verbs that end in AR or ER, and it's changing in all the forms except the nosotros or vosotros. So that's why you get piense, pienses, piense, but pensemos and penseis. Okay, you see the E to an IE stem change everywhere except the nosotros or vosotros. The same is true for AR and ER stem changing verbs. Um, that change from O to UE. So you see vuelva, vuelvas, vuelva, but volvamos, volvais, and vuelvan. That should say vuelvan. That's a typo in your book. Um, but anyway, this is only for verbs that are in an AR or ER that have stem changers. If you're dealing with a verb that is an IR verb and it has a stem change, in this case, it is still going to stem change when it's outside of the boot. Okay, so look, look again. AR and ER verbs that had stem changers, they changed everywhere except this nosotros and this vosotros, right? Pensar changed from E to IE everywhere except nosotros and vosotros where it remained in E. Okay, for IR verbs that have stem changes, that same thing happens. Look at sentir, which normally is an E to IE stem changer. It still changes from an E to an IE in all the forms except the nosotros and the vosotros, but in those forms, instead of remaining an E, like we saw over here with our AR and ER stem changing verbs in the present indicative, in the subjunctive, it still stem changes in the nosotros or the vosotros, again, only if it's an IR verb. Um, verbs that normally change from E to IE only change from E to I in the nosotros or the vosotros, and verbs that change from O to UE only change from O to U in the nosotros and the vosotros. And then finally, verbs that are E to I stem changes, they still just change to E to I in all the forms. Okay, I know that can seem a little complicated, um, but if you've been with me now for four semesters and you're familiar with how the boot works with stem changing verbs and how the nosotros and vosotros are unaffected, this shouldn't be too bad for you. Basically, AR and ER verbs follow the same process as you're used to with the indicative tense, whereas your IR stem changing verbs have an additional stem change in the nosotros or the vosotros that's just a little bit shorter. So E to I becomes only E to I. O to U E becomes only O to U. Okay, so not terrible there. Um, you probably learned about earlier as well about some irregular subjunctive verb forms. I like to give my students the acronym DISHES to help remember these. Um, so each letter of DISHES, D-I-S-H-E-S, -S, stands for an irregular verb. So you have DAR, to give, DAR becomes DE. IR, to go, becomes VAYA. SER, to be, becomes SEA. HABER, becomes AYA. ESTAR, ESTE. AND SABER, SEPA. Okay, so you can see these all the way through. Uh, they do follow the normal conjugation process. They're really not that irregular. Once you memorize the yo form, all the others are pretty easy to recall. So vaya, 
Vayas, vaya, vayamos, vayas, vayan. Sea, seas, sea, seamos, seas, sean. Pretty easy once you know uh, that yo form. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of practice here, I want you to take a moment. I want you to pause your audio and I want you to give these few questions a try. Okay, now that you've had a second to make an attempt here, I'm going to talk to you about a few of these. However, uh, we're not going to look at all of them, but I will project the answers for you so you can see them here. Um, so remember, all subjunctive verbs, you're forming the yo, you're dropping the o, and you're adding the opposite ending. So let's start with an easy one. Um, number three, you have yo and salir. The yo form of salir becomes salgo. I'm going to drop my o. Salir was an IR verb. So we're going to use AR endings instead because this is the subjunctive. So salgo becomes salga. One that's similar to that, also an irregular yo verb, we have tu and hacer. Uh, we know that the yo form of hacer becomes ago, so form the yo, ago, drop the o, and add the opposite ending. So this was an ER verb. You would think I would normally add back ES. However, because we're using the subjunctive, we're going to add back an AS. So you end up with agas. Okay, something else here, we talked just a moment ago about car, gar, and zar verbs. You may recall that verbs ending in car change to k. So here's an example. Los niños pescar, the children fish. So form the yo, pesco, drop your o, and add the opposite ending. So ar verb, you would think I would add an, but this is subjunctive. We're going to add en, but we can't have pesin because verbs ending in car the C changes to a QU. That's how you get your K. So pescar, pesque. Okay, a similar example. El avión despegar. The plane takes off. Despegar was a gar verb. Car verbs change to K. Gar verbs change to G. So despegar, form the yo, despego. Drop the O. Add your opposite ending. So instead of an A for the plane, it, we're going to add an E. Um, but remember, gar verbs change to gay, so my G becomes GU, and instead of despeje, I get despegue. Despegue. Okay, hopefully uh, you're feeling all right about those. Uh, let's look at a stem changer really quickly. A couple of them. So, number eight, we have yo and pedir. The yo form of pedir, you may recall it as a stem change from E to I. So instead of pedo, we get pido. Form the yo, pido, drop the O, pid. And add the opposite ending. This was an IR verb, so instead of adding back an E, we're going to add back an A. Pita. Uh, number nine, nosotros en dormir. This is a tricky one. Dormir, to sleep, normally has a stem change from O to UE. Okay, so let's form the yo. Dormir becomes duermo. Drop our O, duerm. Okay, this was an IR verb, so we would think we would add back emos, but we're going to add back the opposite ending, so it should be Amos, but instead of duermamos, remember that stem changing verbs that are IR verbs, if they stem change in the present indicative from O to UE, then when they are outside of the boot in the subjunctive, that nosotros and vosotros, they're going to change only from O to U. So instead of duermamos, you get durmamos. Okay, hopefully you're feeling pretty okay about those things. Um, now, I know that you maybe feel like, gosh, it's been a long time since I spent time dealing with the subjunctive, right? So if you need some practice, there's an awesome website called Conjuguemos, um, and I've listed a link here. It provides you with these, like, almost like, you may remember, like, back in school, you did multiplication drills, and it gave you a certain amount of time that you had to work through these. They're kind of like those multiplication drills, except it's for verb conjugations, and you can choose to do it timed or untimed, whichever you prefer. But it'll let you practice with those a little bit if you'd like. Okay, so let's keep moving here. And we're going to go through these letters of weirdo. Okay, so the W in weirdo stood for wishes, and the R in weirdo stood for request or sometimes recommendations. So there are a whole series of verbs that oftentimes fall under that um, the W or the R areas of weirdo, and we refer to these as verbs of influence. Some examples are aconsejar, to advise, decir, to tell, desear, literally to desire or to wish, 
insistir in, to insist, mandar, to order, necesitar, to need, pedir, to ask, permitir, to permit, prohibir, to prohibit, querer, to want, recomendar, to recommend, or sugerir, to suggest. You can see those stem changes identified in parentheses there for you. Okay, so again, recall that in order for the subjunctive to be used, we need two subjects, okay, and a verb of influence, in this case, from weirdo. Another area that you see here with weirdo is the O, which always stands for, always refers to ojalá. Um, this is a very common expression, and you will always, always, always use the subjunctive if you see ojalá. Um, it's usually followed by a que, ojalá que, I hope that. Uh, this, this phrase is actually from Arabic, and it means God willing. So ojalá que, I hope that, um, blah, blah, blah. So ojalá que visitemos a California. I hope we visit California. Or ojalá que vayas mañana. I hope that you leave tomorrow. Um, so, weirdo. Ojalá. We've talked about the W, the R, and the O. You also see the I of weirdo, which refers to impersonal expressions. And these are things like, it's good that, it's important that, it's impossible that, es bueno que, es importante que, es imposible que, etc. Um, and you see several of these in your book. So, es ridículo que, es sorprendente que, es fantástico que. I'm sure you're familiar with those. Um, here are some examples going back to what we just talked about, just a little learning check for you. You're supposed to select the verb, and you will have some assignments like this this week in VHL Central. So, number one, I'll do an example for you. Tus amigos te aconsejan que blank muchas fotos en tu viaje. So, you know that fotos are pictures, photos, um, and you have to decide if you're going to buscar fotos, look for photos, or sacar fotos, to take photos. So, hopefully, um, we can say your friends advise that you take a lot of photos on your trip. So, we can narrow it down to sacar, either to C or D here. Uh, we're saying we hope that you take. So, we're going to form our yo, saco. We're going to drop our O. Um, and we're going to add the opposite ending. So, sacar was an AR verb. You would think I would add AS. However, again, this is the subjunctive. So, I'm going to add ES instead. Sacar is a car verb, so my C is going to change to Q, Q, U, and I end up with saques. Saques. It should be letter C as your answer here. Okay. Um, we'll do one more. Su abuelo le recomienda a Julio que blank para su examen. So his grandmother recommends to Julio, so Julio's grandmother recommends that he study for his exam, or that he understand for his exam. Your verbs here are estudiar or entender. In this case, we're saying we hope that Julio studies. So we're going to use estudiar. So first step, form your yo, estudio, drop the o, um, add the opposite ending. So, oh, estudiar is an a, or then I'm going to add an a, right? No, I'm supposed to add the opposite ending. So instead of an a, you're going to add an e, estudie. Should be letter b, okay? you very quickly to take a moment, pause your audio, and please give numbers 3, 4, and 5 a try. Okay, now that you've had a second to try these, let's look at them. Number 3. Le sugiero a mi compañera de clase que blank una bicicleta. So I suggest to my female classmate, or sorry, female roommate, that she blank a bicycle, that she buy a bicycle, comprar, or that she walk a bicycle, caminar. Obviously, we can narrow it down to A and B, that she buy a bicycle. Okay, so comprar is my verb. Let's form my yo, compro, drop my O, and add the opposite ending. Instead of an A, can add an E, compre. Les pido a mis padres que me blank un carro para mi cumpleaños. So I, uh, I tell my parents that they should blank me a car for my birthday. They should either darme a car, give me a car, or decirme a car, tell me a car. Obviously, we can narrow it down to um, A or B here. My verb is dar, to give. Uh, you may recall that dar is one of my verbs from dishes. Dar 
in the yo form becomes de, and I'm saying I recommend that they give me, so den, den. And the last one, deseamos que no blank mucho calor mañana. Um, we desire that there's not a lot of heat tomorrow, that it's not very hot. You may recall from Spanish 1 to say it's hot, we say hace calor, which comes from the verb hacer. So we can naturally narrow it down to letters C or D. Um, for hacer, I'm going to form my yo, which is hago. Drop my O, and we're saying we hope that it's not hot. So for my third person singular, that he, she, it box, we're going to add back an A. Que no haga mucho calor. Should be letter C. Okay? So that's the subjunctive with verbs of hope or influence. Um, you see some more examples here that are the same kind of thing. You can practice those if you wish. Um, so we've talked about wishes, we talked about impersonal expressions, recommendations, and ojalá. Let's go look at this E of weirdo, which stands for emotions, okay? As we talk about emotions, there are some very common verbs that show up. Uh, one of the most popular is alegrarse de. Oh, me alegro de que. It makes me happy that, to be glad that. Alegrarse de. Another one is the verb enojar. I always tell students to remember uno enojar. You have to really get that in your throat. So you get angry, enojar. You gotta get angry in your throat, enojar, okay? Esperar, to hope. Estar contento de, to be happy. That if you're a female, estar contenta de. Lamentar, to regret or to lament, literally. Molestar, to bother, to annoy. Sentir, to regret. Sorprender, to surprise. Temer, to fear, and tener miedo de, to be afraid of. These are very common emotions. Again, um, you still have to have your two subjects, a K, and some type of emotional trigger word from weirdo. Some examples. Me alegro de que te sientas mejor. I'm glad that you feel better. So me alegro de, there's my independent clause in my K, my next verb is going to be in the subjunctive because there's a change of subject and there was an emotional trigger word. Me alegro de que te sientas mejor. Okay, so sentir, normally in our verb, you would think it would be te sientes, right? But this is the subjunctive. We're using the opposite ending, so te sientas. Um, another example at the bottom here. Temes que el médico te dé una mala noticia. Oh, no. So you're afraid that the doctor is going to give you bad news. So temes que, indicative tense, independent clause, good. A que, great. And now here's my change of subject. Temes que el médico give you. So I fear that the doctor is going to give you te and dar. Obviously, it was part of dishes. It was irregular. So instead of te da, we get te de. Okay. So, oh, here's a funny little meme for you. Um, I, I guess it's not really a funny meme in this case, but the um, the doctor here is assessing the child's status, and she says that, Temo que tu hija tenga una infección de oído. So, temo que, I'm afraid that, tu hija, your daughter, there's my um, emotional word, my emotional trigger word, a K, and my change of subject. So, we know that what follows is going to be in the subjunctive. Temo que tu hija tenga una infección de oído. I'm afraid that your daughter has an ear infection. Here's some examples for you to try. Um, now, your job is to pick the subject in this case that makes the most sense. So you're selecting the independent clause in these examples. Number one, I'll do an example for you. Blank visiten todos los parques de atracciones en un fin de semana. ¿Por qué no se quedan por una semana? So, in letter A, you have siento que. I regret that uh, you all visit all the amusement parks or the attraction parks in a weekend. Or B, es imposible que. It's impossible that you all visit all of the amusement parks in just a weekend. Or me alegro de que. It makes me happy that you all visit all the amusement parks in a weekend. So obviously the most logical selection here, if you read the directions, um, talking about how she and her family are escaping winter weather in Minnesota and taking a trip to Florida, um, it's impossible for you to visit every amusement park in Florida in one weekend. So es imposible. Okay? Um, 
Number two, blank me compres algún recuerdo de tu viaje. So something that you buy me a souvenir of your, from your trip. Espero que, I hope that, temes que, you fear that, or lamento que. Well, let's just go ahead and cross out something here. We know that temes que can't work because compres is in the two form and temes que is in the two form. So that wouldn't work because we wouldn't have a change of subject. So let's just cross that one out. Either I hope that you buy me a souvenir from your trip or I regret that you buy me a souvenir. I hope that sounds better here. I hope that you buy me a souvenir. Okay, uh, for the sake of time, I just want you to pause your audio and give number three a try for me, please. Okay, now that you've had a second to try this, number three says blank, ustedes se queden en un hotel de lujo. So something that you all stay in a luxury hotel. Normally your dad doesn't want to spend that much money on hotels. So either es lógico que, it's logical that you all stay in a luxury hotel. Les molesta que, it's bothering to you all that you all stay in a luxury hotel. Or es sorprendente que, it's surprising that you all are staying in a luxury hotel. Well, when you read the second part that normally your dad doesn't want to spend much money on hotels, we would say es sorprendente que. So notice with numbers one and three, a sorprendente que and es imposible que, those are both impersonal expressions which trigger the subjunctive. Whereas espero que, I hope that, is one of those wishing verbs from weirdo, the W. Okay, so um, just give you a little bit more practice and then we're going to keep moving on. Um, again, we will not do all of these, but you will see some questions kind of like these on, my, on um, VHL Central this week. Number one tells you that ojalá que mi familia llegara a tiempo. I hope that my family arrives on time. Well, we know that subjunctive is going to be used because there's a change of subject, I hope, and then my family. There's a K, and there's a wishing element of weirdo. So I hope that my family arrives on time. Llegar, I'm going to form my yo, which is llego. Drop my O, add my opposite ending. So my family in Spanish is it, not they. So we're going to use the third person singular form since it does not have an S. Um, so AKA the bottom left box, if you learned that structure. So instead of adding an A in llegar, we're going to add an E. However, llegar was a gar verb, and we know that gar verbs change to gay. The G changes to a GU in this case, so you get llegue. Let's do one more. No sorprende que el médico no le recetar algo. So it's very surprising to us that the doctor did not prescribe her something. So recetar, we're going to form the yo. Receto, we're going to drop our o. We're going to add the opposite ending instead of an a. We're adding back an e, going along with the doctor. Okay, I'd like for you to do numbers three, four, and five. Go ahead and pause your audio and give three, four, and five a try. Okay, now that you've got a second to try, number three. Temo que Sandra tener una infección en los pulmones. Oh my gosh, I'm so afraid that Sandra has a lung infection. She has an infection in her lungs. Um, so we know we're using the subjunctive. There's a fear, an emotion, a K, and a change of subject. We're going to form our yo for tener, which is tengo. Drop our O, add the opposite ending instead of an E. We're adding back an A. I fear that Sandra has a lung infection. Number four. ¿Te sorprende que yo decir esto? Did it surprise you or does it surprise you that I say this? That I said that? Um, so we're going to take decir, we're going to form the yo, digo. Um, we're going to drop our o, we're going to add the opposite ending. So instead of adding back an e, we're going to add back an a. Okay, and last one. El médico quiere que nosotros guardar cama por una semana. The doctor wants us to remain in bed for a week. So guardar. We're going to form the yo, guardo, drop our o. Um, instead of adding an amos for that we do this, we're going to add our opposite ending. So it should be guardemos, guardemos. Okay. And finally, the d referring to doubt or denial. Some very common verbs you see with doubt are dudar, to doubt, negar, to deny, no pensar, to not think. No creer, to not believe, and no estar seguro de, to be unsure of. Now, got to be very careful with these. A lot of people see 
uh, Pinsider K. I think that. And they're like, oh gosh, there's a little bit of doubt there. I think, I'm not for sure. That's not right. Don't think that way, okay? In this case, no Pinsider, no creer, to not believe or not think implies that there is some doubt. Whereas creer and Pinsider without a no in front imply the indicative tense. I think that. I believe that. I think that the sky is blue. I believe that the grass is green. Okay? Um, in that case, I'm giving you my opinion. I'm stating what I believe, so there's not a subjunctive form present. It is the indicative. Whereas when I say, I don't think that, I don't believe that, I'm not sure that, blah, 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 there is some doubt present, it is going to be the subjunctive. So be very careful with these. These can be confusing. Okay, um, some examples. No creo que el médico sepa el diagnóstico. I don't believe that the doctor knows the diagnosis. Again, I don't know. I'm not for sure. There's doubt. I'm not for sure that he knows the diagnosis yet. He might, he might not. Um, or no es cierto que. It's not certain that Camilo suffers from arthritis. No es cierto que Camilo parezca. Okay. Um, whereas, again, on the flip side of this, when you take the no away, creo que el médico sabe el diagnóstico. I think that the doctor knows the diagnosis. I'm, I'm pretty sure he already knows, he just hasn't told us yet. Creo que el médico sabe. I know in English this makes no sense, okay? But again, if you have a no in front of a belief, you're stating that you don't believe something, it's subjunctive. You're saying that you do believe something, it's indicative. Okay, it's easier just to memorize those. No creer, subjunctive. Creer, indicative. Okay, same thing with a cierto que. It's certain that Camilo suffers from arthritis. That's indicative. It's not certain that she suffers from arthritis. Could be something else causing her pain. Okay. Um, all right. We've talked a lot about those things. I don't want to overwhelm you. Let's give you some examples here to try. So, creemos que ellos poder dejar de fumar. We believe that they are able to stop smoking, okay? We're saying we believe that. In this case, creer que triggers the indicative. So, we believe that they are able to, poder is just going to become normal old, pueden. Okay? If I had thrown a no in front, and I had said that no creemos que ellos, instead of pueden, we would say puedan. Okay, very careful. Number two, ellos dudan que, they doubt that I hacer ejercicio todos los días. They doubt that I exercise every day. There's obviously doubt present. Hacer is going to form the yo of hago, drop the o, and add the opposite ending. So it should be an a instead of an e. Okay. I think you all can handle those. Um, some funny memes for you here. Yo quiero que tú estudies para el examen de español. I hope that you study for your Spanish exam. Or uh, So in this case, quiero que was my trigger word from wishes. I want you to study for your Spanish exam. Or another example, me sorprende que todo el mundo no use el subjuntivo correctamente. It surprises me that there's my emotion uh, that the whole world does not use the subjunctive correctly. Uh, usar instead of usa became use because I had an emotional trigger word here in advance. I had a K and I had a change of subject. And then finally, congratulations, you got a 93% on the subjunctive. You have unlocked your master swag level. You really should be very proud of yourself. Uh, the subjunctive is something that's very hard. That I have, I have friends now, guys, who are native speakers who are just like, dude, I don't get the subjunctive. I still don't get it, right? Sometimes it just sounds right or it doesn't. Um, it is something that you're very fortunate to learn, most likely as a non-native speaker of Spanish, because um, you can really learn the grammar rules as to when to use it and when not to. So, um, like I said, this is sort of a hard topic, so that's why you have a more lengthy video this week. And finally, we talked about por empada. We talked about the subjunctive. Now we're going to talk about commands. Uh, these are pretty easy, and I understand why your book puts these in the same chapter, because they're kind of the same thing. Um, so, as you know, there are positive commands and negative commands. We can say, wash the dishes, positive command, or 
don't wash the dishes, negative commands. We'll start with two commands. You may recall back all the way to Spanish 1 where you learned about the two form, which is our informal way of saying you. And we were saying that, um, you know, use this two form with friends, family, uh, people with whom you're informal. So um, in this case, positive two commands, if you're telling someone to wash the dishes, lava los platos, um, positive commands use the el, ella, usted box, that third person singular conjugation. So lavar became lava, comer becomes come, hablar becomes habla. It's so using that bottom left box. Uh, there are, of course, some irregular two commands because we love irregular verbs in Spanish. Uh, decir becomes di, hacer, as, so di la verdad, tell the truth. Haz la cama, make your bed. Ir becomes ve, ve a tu cuarto, go to your room. Poner becomes pon, pon la mesa, go set the table. Salir, sal, leave, sal. Um, ser, se, you might tell your friends, se bueno or se buena, se simpatico, right? Uh, tener becomes ten, and venir becomes ven. I'll never forget, uh, even growing up as an adult, my high school Spanish teacher would always yell at us and say, Ven aquí, when we were in trouble, right? We got yelled at. Ven aquí, come here. Ven aquí. Tú, aquí, ven, ahora. Um, so, um, again, positive two commands are using this bottom left box. Lavar, lava, comer, come, hablar, habla, beber, bebe, so on and so forth. You have your regular two commands. Now, all other commands are going to follow this standard procedure. This is going to sound real familiar to you, okay? You're going to form the yo. You're going to drop the O and you're going to add the opposite. <gasps> Where have we heard that before? Oh my gosh, it's just like the subjunctive. Okay, so all of your other commands, forming the yo, dropping the O, adding the opposite ending. Okay, so our AR verb endings are in green, ER, IR verb endings are in red, and of course those are going to switch for one another. So an example, if we were going back over here to comer and come, um, the negative form of comer and I need to delete some of this. The negative form of comer, um, we're gonna form our yo, como, drop our o, and add the opposite ending. So this is a two command. So with our negative two commands, we are going back to our normal two box. So instead of adding an es and saying no comes, we need to add the opposite ending. It should become no comas, okay? Same thing with hablar. We had hablar just a second ago. Uh, we're gonna form our yo, hablo, uh, using our normal two box, we would get hablas, and we're telling someone not to talk. We can't say no hablas. We're going to say no hables. Uh, negative two commands. So again, you're going to form your yo, you're going to drop the o, and add the opposite ending of whatever normal form this may be. So in this case, we were doing a negative two command, so as or es. Okay, this works the same for all of your commands, right? It's the same as the subjunctive two form, if you want to think about it that way. So Look at some more examples. Viajar, viaja, travel. No viajes, don't travel. Viaja, positive, using that bottom left box, viaja. Uh, no viajes, using your two box this time and the opposite ending. So instead of viajas, with an AS, viajes. Okay, so on and so forth. Again, you see all of these irregulars. Um, so dar, no des, don't give. Ir, no vayas, don't go. Ser, no seas, don't be, blah, blah, blah. Um, estar, no estés, and saber, no sepas. Those are the common ones you're going to see. Um, this works as well for formal commands. Same thing. Form the yo, drop the o, add the opposite ending of whatever box you're working with. So if this were an usted command, we're going to still use our usted box. AR verbs, instead of adding an A, we're going to add an E. And um, for an ER and IR verb, Instead of adding an E, we're going to add an A. So it's just backwards from what you think. Hablar, for example, becomes forming my yo, hablo, dropping my O, and the opposite ending. So instead of adding an A, I'm adding an E. Hable, talk. Or in the negative form, no hable. You just throw a no in front. Um, same thing for an ustedes command. Form the yo, hablo, drop my O, and the opposite ending. So instead of a in, we're adding back e in. Hablen. You all should talk, hablen, or no hablen, stop that, no hablen. Uh, you hear this a lot in introductory Spanish level courses with things like common classroom commands. Um, 
Abran los libros, open your books. Abrir was an IR verb, but we use the opposite ending. So instead of abrin with an E-N, we got abran, A-B-R-A-N, abran los libros, or um, cierren los libros, cerrar, to close, uh, an AR verb. We use the opposite ending, so cierren los libros. Um, lots of common expressions there. Or, or your Spanish teacher may tell you, hey, escuchen, escuchen, por favor. Listen, please, escuchen, right? Switching that AR uh, to an EN in the negative form. Okay, um, some more examples of the same thing. Tomar, tome, tomen. Or no tome, no tomen. Um, salir, salga, salgan, or no salga, no salgan. Finally, I want to talk to you about some nosotros commands where, uh, again, following the same process, you're forming the yo. Drop in the O, add in the opposite ending. So, bailar, bailo, drop your O, it was an AR verb. So, instead of bailamos, we get bailemos. Uh, fun thing about these nosotros commands is they're usually translated as let's, whatever. So, bailemos, let's dance. Bebamos, let's drink. Abramos, let's open. So, these are all things you can hear in, on the day-to-day. Bailemos, bebamos, abramos. Um, and then to make them negative, you just throw a no in front. So, no bailemos, no bebamos. No abramos. So on Christmas, you say, Mommy, mommy, abramos los regalos. Let's open the presents. And she says, no abramos los regalos. Let's not open the presents, right? Um, so I want to give you a chance to practice all these commands all shuffled together. So that's what you're going to be doing on BHL Central. For example, here we go with a two command. Look at this. Abrir. Remember, positive two commands use that um, bottom left box. So... I want you to take a moment and try these, and then I'll unmute myself. Okay, now that you've had a second to try these, abrir in the positive two form should become abre, A-B-R-E, normal old bottom left ending, thrown on an E, right? The negative, we're going to form our yo, abro, drop our O, and we're going to add the opposite ending. So instead of adding an E-S, we're adding an A-S. So you get abre and no abras. So abre el libro. No abras el libro. Okay, try the usted form next. Again, pause your audio. Give this a try. Okay, hopefully you remembered how this works. We formed our yo, abro, dropped our o, added the opposite ending. So instead of abre, we got abra. And to make it negative, we just threw a no in front. So abra, no abra. Okay. Try the ustedes command. I bet you can do it quickly. Form an yo, drop an O, you get abran and no abra. And finally, with the nosotros command, if we want to say let's open, we get abramos, or sorry, abramos and no abramos. So you're forming that yo, abro, drop in your O, and the opposite ending. This was an IR verb, we're using an AR verb ending. So abramos, no abramos. Okay. And of course, you can use these with commands as well. Um, you likely learned about this in an earlier course, but just to give you a very quick overview, um, sometimes you see these with reflexives, and uh, in that case, you have the option of either attaching or putting it in front. Usually with positive commands, we always attach to the end, and with negative commands, we always put them between the no and the verb. So, levantense temprano, wake up early. No se levanten tarde, don't wake up late. <laughs> Um, another example, dime todo, tell me everything. No me digas nada, don't tell me anything, right? So you can see with the positive commands, our pronouns are attached to the end, whereas with negative commands, they are, um, they precede the verb, okay? Um, oftentimes you also see this with the word K, and these are usually translated as let, and whatever, let someone do something. So, Que pase el siguiente. Let the next person pass. Or, que lo haga ella. Hey, let her do it. Que lo haga ella. Um, so on and so forth there. And again, if you're using an object, um, any kind of pronoun, it's going to go in front of your verb here. So, que se lo den Jose y Raquel. Let Jose and Raquel give it to them. Or, que no se lo den Jose and Raquel. Don't let Jose and Raquel give it to them. So on and so forth. Uh, finally, I'll give you a little more practice with this, and then I will stop talking. So, 
Um, number one, te conviene descansar. It works for you to relax. So you're just going to tell someone, turn this into a command. Relax. Descansar in the two form, descansa. In the usted, descanse. In the ustedes, descansen. Or in the nosotros, descansemos. Um, number two, relajarse, relax. You're telling one person to relax. We're going to attach our pronoun to the end. Our se becomes te in the two form. So, relájate. So on and so forth. Okay? I hope you guys have a wonderful week. If at any point you have questions about any of these things, please know I'm always just an email away. I'm always here to help you in any way that I can. Hope you guys have a wonderful week, and we'll talk soon. Take care.